Hey everybody, uh, this is Brian and uh, I own a small computer repair shop in South Florida and I've had a few people ask me some questions and I figured I'd just do a video uh, to answer them. Uh, I get a lot of questions on my, my little boxes that I use um, on these, these, uh, these screw organizers. I used to use this little guy right here and I bought, I bought these I think at Walmart or something and um, and, and then I upgraded to this. I got this at Lowe's. It's made by Stackon. Ten compartments. And the reason I upgraded is because this one has two, four, five, six, seven. It's just seven compartments. And um, I needed a couple of more compartments because there's different types of screws that I want to organize. And if you go back and watch my videos and how I'm disassembling the machines, You'll see it's very organized and that I never have any screws left over. And this is the reason why I never have any screws, screws left over. And if I do have screws left over, I go, hey, I need to you know, look to see where they go. Um, so just so you can get a, a closer look at this, you can see there's different uh, labels in here. I just used a label maker to make this. And I've got battery tray, hinges, HD, which stands for hard drive interior, interior bottom, keyboard, LCD, except, you know, obvious, bottom panel, and CD. So a couple of these may not be obvious as to why, you know, the rhyme or reason of the screws. Interior, uh, I classify as any screws that I find that are underneath the keyboard in a laptop. And that would mean from the top down. So if I'm pulling out a keyboard and I see screws on that top, piece of plastic that holds the trackpad and all that, I pull those out. If I get even further down into the motherboard, uh, the motherboard screws go here into the interior bin. Interior bottom means I flipped the, I flipped the machine over and I pulled screws out of the bottom of the motherboard, okay? Uh, the, uh, let's see, bottom panel is all the screws on the bottom panel itself, excluding the battery tray. The battery tray will always have a few screws in it sometimes three, sometimes five, uh, and you can you know, store all of those in there. Hinges, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Anything that comes out of the hinge area of the heart of the uh, for the LCD that would go there. Keyboard screws, that makes sense. CD makes sense. Hard drive makes sense. Um, so this keeps me organized, and I, and I have a few of these in the shop. I have, uh, I have four of these guys, because at any one time I've probably got four disassembled. I've got a couple of these probably going to phase these out just because I think they're they're, they're too small. Uh, they, they work good for, for a, an amateur, you know, if somebody was doing this type of work maybe just once or twice a year, but I disassemble and repair quite a few laptops every week, so uh, I need to stay organized. Uh, the other question I had was the proper way to apply thermal paste. Um, thermal paste is... Uh, this stuff here, this is a this is SpectraCool. I like this stuff, or X15 works. There's there's a couple of different brands out there that I like, and I buy it in bulk. And these are in I think two grams, three grams. This is three grams right here. Um, the way you properly apply thermal paste is by using the grain of rice method. Everybody knows what a grain of rice looks like, right? So um, you would. Uh, basically recreate that on the top of the chip that you're trying to cool. You don't need to put it on the actual um, uh, cooling unit. You need to put it on the, the CPU itself in a grain of rice fashion. In a laptop, it's like one or two grains of rice. In a desktop, it could be five or six, possibly seven. And then whenever I lay, you know, if, I, if this is the chip, and this this is the chip and this is the cooling unit. I'd set that on there and I just twist it a little bit to to move it around and then it should flatten out. Thermal paste should be in a semi liquid form. If you dismantle your laptop and you find hard thermal paste that you have to scrape away, that's sort of like like soft plastic. That's bad. You want it to be semi liquid and so that it can it can take the heat transfer from the CPU to the cooling system. The cooling system takes it out to the fan uh, where the fan blows the cold, the hot air out and, and brings in cold air. That's the whole idea behind thermal paste. It creates a fine, a feather fine, I mean probably as my dad would say, frog hair split twice, size 
of of a, a, a diet, you know, of paste between those two pieces of plastic and metal that create the transfer of heat. Even I've heard people say, and some people have commented on my videos that say, "Hey, I just used a piece of aluminum foil, and that, that worked fine." Um, yeah, that'll work fine for about a maybe a week or a month, but that is not going to be enough to transfer the heat. And what that person is going to find out, unfortunately, is that that motherboard is probably going to fry out and um, the cost of that repair would be a whole lot more than a $5 tube of this stuff. And they sell this at all the big box stores like uh, Best Buy has it now. I saw it there. And um, Radio Shack. So you have no excuse. You need to just go and get some of this stuff and reapply it. And you watch my videos, all my cooling videos of cleaning the cooling systems on these laptops. This is essential. If you If you don't replace this, you're going to have a bad time. You don't want, you don't, your machine, you're essentially shaving life off of your machine. By replacing your, by replacing your thermal compound, um, you're adding years to your, the life of the computer. So, you know, um, we all don't have a bunch of money to burn. So, you know, go ahead and keep your laptops cool, everybody. So those are the two questions I wanted to address in today. And uh, I thank everybody for watching my videos and everybody that subscribed Thank you so much. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. You can always ask me any questions you want. Um, I'm trying to do more videos a week. Uh, I really, I really enjoy the um, the discourse, the online discourse that we have. I, I even have some people calling me from time to time that have seen my videos on YouTube um, from all over the United States, and they've asked me questions. And um, if I have time, I, I'll do that. And uh, that was my text message. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you so much for watching, and please like, please subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.